we'll bring you uh, the stories that made it to select um, national newspapers this morning. As is a tradition with us here, we'll begin with the Daily Trust. The Daily Trust, it's uh, a single headline, of course, mm. uh, because uh, one of the governors has also taken uh, a prime space to showcase what he has done um, in the last one year. The Daily Trust today, the major headline reads, minimum wage, labor vows to reject little addition to 60,000 naira. Why we relax strike for one week, NLC president, and get me cost implication in 48 hours, Tinibu orders Edun. Edun, of course, is the coordinating minister of the economy. And you'll find those stories when you buy today's Daily Trust and open to page four. All right, uh, The Guardian is up next. Uh, let's take a look at the front page. All right. Um, World Environment Day. All right. You can only find this because, uh, you know, there isn't a lot going on. But um, how illegal mining deforestation, others leave Nigerians poorer. More on this on page six. And uh, I, I dare say that uh, because of the impact of climate change and um, some of the commitments that we're failing to deliver on, uh, this continues to be uh, an ever-present uh, danger to the survival of most Nigerians. Deforestation and illegal mining are two hot topics uh, among many others uh, relating to the environment that need to be urgently addressed. Uh, Niger NGE condemns increasing spate of journalists' abduction. Senate tackles labor over blackout, Hajj flight disruption. Uh, strike, Tinubu blinks, gives uh, finance minister 48 hours to table action plan. IGP warns senior officers against extortion uh, personnel, uh, extorting personnel over promotion interviews. Again, uh, INEC extends CVR exercise. That's a continuous voter registration. Captures 120,000 plus new voters across Imo and Ondo states. Bandits abduct diversity lecturers, family in Katsina. And um, these are some of the stories you can follow on the Guardian newspaper for today. All right, and moving on to the Platform Times newspaper, leading with something completely different. 176 terrorists surrender, 57 arrested in Lake Chad. That is coming from the Multinational Joint Tax Force. And quickly to other stories, Labour insists the Nibu government must reverse electricity tariff hike to other stories there newly wed woman allegedly severs husband manhood in kaduna uh, yeah. we have a kaduna man in the studio and we get a sense there's no connection is. <laughs> uh, no connection happen. somebody <laughs> tells me well, okay let's see All right. and deputy commissioner of police slums dies in abuja office we were talking about this slightly mm -hmm. earlier heritage bank no plans to withdraw licenses of three banks says the central bank of Nigeria and of course on a mild part Tenebu names Abuja Highway after the Nobel lyric Wally Shoinka. We have, like I said, a proud Kaduna man yeah. joining us in the studio this morning. A veteran uh, journalist, a forerunner for most of us in this profession. Uh, former director of news at the Voice of Nigeria, Mr. Ben Shaman. It's a pleasure to have you join us this morning. Thank you very much. Um, when I said the Kaduna man, I looked at your face and uh, I'm not sure it's for reasons like this you want to be proud of Kaduna, isn't it? Uh, well, to also say that I am a Kaduna state man. Yes. Not a Kaduna man. The Kaduna man are those in the urban area. Ah. But I'm from a village in Kaduna state. So I'm a Kaduna state man. Okay. Proudly okay. <laughs> Kaduna state man. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Okay, uh, Mr. Ben is retired, but I guess um, in your active years in service, you have been part of several minimum wage negotiations from, from the military to this day. Give us a sense of what you make of this fought and back between the federal government <laughs> and the Nigerian Labour Congress as well as the, the Trade Union Congress of Nigeria. You see, honestly, when I started work, I was level 8, step 3. I worked with presidency before I joined journalism, mm. management services and training. Mm. 
and my salary was 424 naira 26 kobo. Mm. You know, that was late 80s. But uh, today, at that time, you could still pay transportation, pay school fees, take care of your family, and all that. Today, I left service. You see that you, you are receiving hundreds of thousands. But they have not done anything that is ordinary. And that is why you could see these strikes. And when a strike is called upon, you said you shut off the national grid. He said um, hospitals will have to, to be closed. Those who are indeed undergoing some operation, no, no, no more light. You know, so it's a whole gamut of things that affects the the economy. Yeah. But again, the worker will always need. I mean, let's have it a bit good for the country. When somebody, I was listening to an international radio station and they said minimum wage will be 60,000. They wanted to compute it to dollar terms. It turned out to be around close to $40. So, um, and someone screamed. Say, and you mean the Nigerian will survive that way? So it says a lot. And he's saying a lot, uh, truly, we're talking of hunger. And when we're talking of this hunger, why is it that we cannot seize the opportunity of this rainy season to make things for the better, to change things for the better? Government should look at it. If you say, okay, we're going to jack up the minimum age just a little bit, 65,000 naira, 70,000 naira, you know, it's a whole thing that is so mixed with... Um, if you still, if you have thirty thousand as minimum wage, and some states cannot pay, now labor is saying give us five hundred thousand. And I know it's a very very tall, very high demand, but then labor has to come down, government has to go up, because truly the people are suffering. Yeah. Sixty thousand for a man who has a wife, for a man who has three children or four. And anybody who, in, who works in Nigeria has some um, extended family guys to take care of. How do you pay your rent? How do you pay your school fees? How do you feed them? How do you clothe them? What about hospital bills? Too many things. Fertilizer Sunday. I, I was in Manchok uh, the other weekend. And usually... Fridays, they, they, they are the market days for, for Manchok Marawa mm. people. At Kagoro, you have uh, on Saturday. Uh, uh, then Kavanchan has become a daily uh, kind of a market. But it's instructive that these, day, these days are market days. And you have fertilizer warehouses. I, I, I think somebody has to correct me. Almost three years now, that of Manchok has been closed. Mm. Now, how do we overcome hunger? Now, if you don't have fertilizer and can't take care of these people, I mean, and salary is that poor. Now, farming season has come with 60,000 where a bag of fertilizer, uh, fertilizer is around uh, 30, 35,000 naira. How do you buy it? And the irony again is when, when it comes to what government says, buying of excess grains. What's this excess grain? When these farmers have sweated and bought uh, fertilizer, God blesses us, we're always farming. Now, good yielding. No post-harvest management. It's then government rushes to uh, kind of buy um, uh, the, what they call excess grains in the market. And you see them storing them in, um, in, in uh, silos here and there. As of today, you hear government saying they're going to release excess grains to the needy mm -hmm. in, the, in the streets, in the market. Mm -hmm. These are uh, uh, grains also bought from uh, local farmers in most cases, who indeed, end of year, some will want to buy Christmas clothes, pay school fees, pay this, buy this, and all mm -hmm. that. Government will say, okay, since it's that cheap, let's now buy 
and store. And you now have people who will just be buying, buying, stockpile and do their hoarding mm -hmm. just to make sure this critical moment where hunger is all over the place, they make their silly profits right. against but, humanity. But in, in looking at where we are right now, do you think the seriousness of the situation is getting the kind of attention it needs from, from both sides? Because Nigerians seem to be leaning towards uh, labor at one point, and when the strike was called off itself, there are a lot of people who think that you know we shouldn't have called off the strike, that this was the opportunity to only call it off when there's an offer that the labor is willing to accept before you call it off. And from the federal government's uh, body language, as well as the National Assembly, a lot of people are saying it leaves much to be desired. Do you think you know, this issue is being treated with the seriousness that it requires? Well, you see, the other time Labour had to call off the, the, the strike that way, they got the condemnation of, um, of Nigerians, many Nigerians. And uh, this time around, one would have thought that, as they say, once beaten, twice shy. Mm. Uh, if a snake almost got you beaten, if you see a rope, you know how to jump. <laughs> and now, uh, we expected that uh, labor would have uh, been incessant, probably, um, been incessant in uh, saying, look, this money is not going to us as labor. This money is going to Nigerians, your voters, those you swore, uh, you have sworn to protect in terms of uh, security, in terms of housing, in terms of education. If you make it better for them, and uh, I'm passionate about education, I'm passionate about uh, the teaming youths. Uh, truly, if you look at it, how many people roam around trying to find uh, some, uh, some ways of uh, feeding, I think that a better budget a kind of will, um, um, will, will solve this kind of a problem and in budgeting what do you think about even pensioners in budgeting what do you think about those pro to be promoted in budgeting what do you think about those to be employed in budgeting what do you think about many of that because after when you are paid this money from there they're going to take housing from it national health insurance labor union will also take theirs uh, quite a lot of other uh, subheads in terms of uh, payment uh, deductions you just see them uh, all waiting for for this uh, uh, worker mm -hmm. and in as much as it's also been announced that salaries have been increased of course the transporter is saying look the worker is, has, has received this and who is this worker this fight now is for the federal uh, worker mm -hmm. The states have not started theirs. Mm -hmm. Now, how will you pay federal workers and the, the state, uh, I mean, the, when I say the state, the nation cannot sleep because a few people. Are these workers up to two million? But when you pay two million, now we're now talking about uh, maybe 200 and, 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 and what million now are, are suffering because two million have been increased. And what's the percentage increase? Of, of this so the ripple effect is is just there mm -hmm. and i still hope if by way of a, a little deviation if you give these local governments their money they ought the, that they ought to have mm -hmm. i mean it's going to solve quite a lot of this uh, of these problems because in a local government count how many employees are in that local government mm -hmm. count them they are so uh, minimal. But when you look at the ripple effects of uh, state governments holding on to their money, and they just say, take this, you make the voucher in, in the state capital, take this and pay your staff. Now take this little 1,000, just in case all these people say, say, Kai, continue, go on song, and all that. When they come, take this and, and, and say to them, oh, yeah. you know, some marriage, some uh, mm. burial, ceremony, uh, whatever yeah. will come, just be giving them 10,000 10, and they shout your party. Uh, it, it doesn't help at all. Okay. Let the local government have their autonomy. And I'm telling you, quite a lot of these uh, problems will be absorbed by the local government. All right. Um, I wish um, we had more time to spare and look into several issues. But I mean, the country is about a living wage right now and all the associated issues thereof. I want to thank you very much for finding time to be here and for giving us all the dimensions uh, to these issues and, and what needs to be done, especially uh, your closing remarks around the need yeah, to resuscitate the local the government. government. Yeah. We've been talking to Mr. Ben Shaman. And the Kaduna man. <laughs> the lady yeah. who attacked the husband 
And I read the story. I saw that the man said, I've never had an issue with my wife. Nothing, nothing. Yeah. Uh, I'm know. sure when they interrogate your wife, she would let us know what exactly, exactly. the, yeah. Yeah. the yeah. issues are. Yeah. Uh, and it seems I it's a Kaduna it's not issue. the economic uh, 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 issue. We will leave Kaduna people to deal with those issues. Well, That's it is that. a criminal case, <laughs> and criminality belongs to the federal government. Okay, if you say so. <laughs> uh, that's the much that time would allow us this morning. Thank you very much for finding time to be part of this, and as always, uh, for continuing to support what we put out there uh, from the stables of Trust TV. I'm Sunday, Michael Ogu. Let's do this again tomorrow. My name is Abdullah Ahmed. Thank you for your time and company. We'll see you again tomorrow at 8.